Today on Craze Performance Repair, we have a axle shaft seal on a 2008 Mercury Mariner, uh, also known as a Ford Escape. They're basically the same vehicle. We're going to go ahead and get to it and get this axle shaft seal replaced. So stay tuned and find out what we need in order to do this job. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is only for the sake of the camera, I'm going to remove this plastic shrouding out of the way just so that you guys can better see what I'm doing. Okay, the first thing we need to remove is this bolt so that we can pull the control arm down. The bolt through here, this is a 13 millimeter if it's still the factory size. And the other side is a 15 millimeter. I'm going to use an impact on it. Now that the nut is off of there, we are going to go for the bolt here. This is a very rusty vehicle, so that's why I take the nut off first in hopes that this bolt will be able to spin. All right, the bolt is now spinning pretty decent, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a brass hammer on the other side. So now on this side, we're gonna take this brass hammer, we're gonna put it on the end of the bolt, and then I'm gonna use this style hammer to hit the brass hammer with. Now that we have the bolt through far enough, we're gonna grab a punch. Now I'm using a brass punch because it's less likely to damage the bolt or will not damage the bolt. You can use a steel punch, that will work fine. Now I'll do this next part with caution, but there's a slot in the back here and you're gonna to wanna to use a chisel that just barely starts to fit in that slot and pound it into that slot. You don't want to go too far because you might damage the knuckle here, especially if it's an aluminum knuckle. This is an iron knuckle, so this one should be okay. Now take your pry bar and give it a little bit of a pry. You can see it's going down here. Uh, hopefully I'll have enough room for this tool, and I do. So this SJ tool thing is for going like this on control arms, shoving your pry bar into, and then prying down on. I just grabbed me a little bit bigger pry bar here. That one did not have hardly any leverage. If it does not go willingly, on the other side, I'm gonna hit it like this while I put pressure on it with the pry bar. Sometimes it might be necessary to open this up a little bit more as well. Okay, see how it released like that? Now I finally got it loose. This thing is being quite difficult, but I will get it. Finally came out of there. So I'm gonna take the main axle nut off first. Okay, now that that axle nut is off of there, I can take the axle, push it through. It might be necessary to use an air hammer or a standard hammer on that thing. Now, this guy is gonna get in the way big time, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bungee it or ratchet strap it out of the way. Now, with that guy out of the way, I can take this pry bar and just lightly pry between the case and the CV axle. It should come out really easy. If it requires some force, be cautious because you might crack the transmission case. Okay, there is the axle shaft. You wanna make sure you inspect here for a groove in case the seal has worn a groove into it and there is nothing going wrong with this one. Now, you're gonna want a seal remover tool such as this. A pry bar can work in some circumstances. If you have one of these, you're gonna want to make sure that that hook right there does not end up going against the case. You wanna keep it within the seal when you pry on it, otherwise you will scratch the case. So the other way you can do this, on this particular transmission, there's enough room that I can take this pry bar here and I can actually pry on the seal and it'll pop out real nice and easy. Now, when we get the seal out, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inspect it. I'm not just gonna throw a new one in right away because I wanna see what has actually failed, if anything, or if it's just worn out. So this seal actually appears to be in okay shape, which is unfortunate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and slide it on the shaft here and see how it fits. It actually fits really well but I just noticed something. This seal is wet all the way around the seal. So I'm wondering if it isn't the case part of the seal that's leaking. 
We have a lot of heavy corrosion here. So the seal has probably been pushed out slightly. Let you guys get a look at what I'm doing here. I'm wiping this thing out and I'm inspecting to see if there's any kind of uh, scratches or anything from maybe somebody removing the seal before, even though it looks like it's been in there since the car was new. I see a lot of nasty corrosion here I'm gonna have to clean up before I dare put a seal back in. Perfect tool to clean up that kind of stuff is a super scraper. I will throw a link below. Okay, now that I got that all cleaned up, I'm going to prepare the new seal. Now the new seal does not have that nice rubber ring on it like the other one did, but it does have this shield here that the other one did. Another thing I want to check is this bushing inside here to see its condition. That might be part of why the seal is leaking if that bushing is shot. Now I probably should have checked this when I was pulling it out, but we're going to go ahead and slide this axle back in here once. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing up and up on this thing. I'm looking for the slop. Now, the amount of slop that I'm feeling should be taken up by the seal pretty easily. So I feel comfortable with that being okay. Okay, now I mentioned earlier about the axle not coming out. So if you look at this clip here, it's got these sharp edges. If these edges were to say be in the down position like that, see how low that sits? I don't know if you could see that or not. But this thing can sit quite a ways out of its groove. And if it's sitting too far, this clip will actually roll over the splines here and cause it to bind and be pretty messed up. If you pull too hard on it, it'll really jack things up for you and uh, possibly ruin the transmission if you're not careful enough. So just keep that in mind when you're pulling this out. You should not need too much effort. If you do, most likely it's in this position where that groove is down, and you're gonna to wanna to turn it like this so the groove is up, you have a better chance that way. That's why I say turn it 180. All right, if you have not been a mechanic or are just doing this on your own vehicle, a very good product for RTV is called Right Stuff. You should not need RTV on a seal, an axle seal, pinion seal, things like that. So I'm very light when I do it. You should either use this or anaerobic sealer but this is gonna be more general use. I'm gonna use this today because I feel more comfortable with it. And what I do, I take a small amount, and I'm just gonna put a thin layer all the way around this thing, real thin layer. I have quite a bit left over because I put too much on my finger apparently. Did not need very much at all. Now the reason I choose right stuff is because it can seal even with oil in the way. At least that's what they claim. All right, so now the RTV's on there, I have a piece of metal here that happens to fit the outer diameter of that. You're gonna need something that fits it pretty decent or a actual seal installer. I just have this here. Set that up on that, put something across it. Then my preferred tool is a dead blow rubber mallet. All right, this particular one, I had to change it up a little bit. I can't get this thing to drive worth of crap, so I'm using a seal installer. Sometimes these things are real tough to get in. This happened to be one of those. But it is in now. And it's all nice and flat and pretty. So I think I'm good to go there. Now let's make it so that you guys can see again. Here we go. You can see, it's all in, nice, flat, pretty. Now I am gonna lube for the seal here. And being this is a transmission, I'm using an actual transmission grease. You do not need to use this, you can use petroleum jelly. But this seal did not come with any kind of grease, that's why I'm doing this. All right, now we can go ahead and put this axle back in, being cautious not to bump the seal. Now, if you live in a rusty climate such as I do, you're gonna want to take like a stainless steel tube brush type wire brush on a drill, or maybe a small hone or something, and clean out this hole for the future so it's easier to work on. Then I always take a little bit of anti-seize and go ahead and slide it in that hole. I'm going to go ahead and throw some of the spray anti-seize on the splines inside the wheel hub. And then of course I'm going to anti-seize this bolt before I put it in here. The joys of being in a rusty climate.
You always want to make sure that you torque this axle nut properly. If you don't, this wheel bearing will have premature failure. This particular vehicle is 221, but be sure to check your application. The front wheel drive and all wheel drive might be different. This is a all wheel drive version. Now this is 221 foot pounds. I should make sure I'm clear of that in case you're from another country. Now it's just a matter of throwing the wheel on, torquing the wheel, and taking it for a test drive, checking for leaks again. And this vehicle will be done. I have other things to do on it though, so I am not gonna go ahead and do that. You just, uh, you'll have to take care of that on your own. And with that, please like, share, subscribe, and as always, I hope to see you on another video. Thanks for watching.